Thank you. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Quick yeah. and easy. Uh, um, so on your list, is there equipment on there as well? Or do you want to kind of quickly kind of? Yeah, I'll mention equipment. Yeah. The equipment that you need is a good microphone. Now I use the ATR 2100, which is a very reasonably priced microphone that sounds good. And J-Man and I were talking and sometimes even the more expensive ones, sound engineers can tell the difference, but right. the consumer generally can't. And that's one of the things I got to do was test mics at podcast movement. And this one was just so beautiful. It made my voice a little deeper, but when it comes down to it, well, do I really need to spend $350 on a new mic? Hmm. I, you know, I don't know, but you have to get these little things too, these little covers because they help. It's kind of funny when you get into podcasting, your P's and B's get this like, not spitty sound, but kind of a, they make this pingy sound. And I find when I have my, oh, you've got the pop one too, the pop yeah. filter that goes in what front of it. What do you think it. about, now that you said this, this is sat in my drawer since I bought the first um, the eight. So you guys know I have the exact microphone that, that Monica is talking about. I think it's the best mic for your money. Uh, just yes. like what she says, comparing the price versus quality. And I've always wondered, so this is like for the, right. The, that's what you're yep. talking about when, when somebody's talking. Yep. Uh, so you've used them and do you see a dramatic difference or is it just the, like you said, the engineers, people who are really keyed into sound all day, they can hear the, minute details, but the average listener, not so much. Well, okay. that pop filter that you have right there is good. And I haven't had anybody say, Monica, you really need to work on this. So I haven't added one of those for myself, but these styrofoam foamy things, that's what you need to put on top of your mic. And the other thing that I've observed is my headphones. Sometimes I get a little more pop on the headphones than I do on the regular mic. So I, gotcha don't like the headphones as much. I like the mic and you have to pay attention to how close it is to your mic. When I teach a class, I like to drop it down. And sometimes I find I'm too quiet that way. So the microphone does need to be. And of course I love everything red. So mine's red. <laughs> That's why I made your name red. Yeah. Thank you for doing yeah. that. <laughs> um, great. Great with the branding, but it's, uh, it's, I love that you said that too, because so this microphone, the, the shore that I'm using here, it has two automatic features. So you don't have to mess with the settings too much. There's a near one, which I have to be within six inches of the microphone. And since I, I knew I would be on with the podcasting queen, I'm like, I, I got to have the best sounding voice possible. So the near with a dark tone is what I'm, my setting is right now. But if I moved it further away, you wouldn't be able to hear me as well. But I have a far setting. Like you said, if we're doing like a class, I don't want it up in my face like this. Right. The whole time I can keep it almost off camera if I want to. Well, and you want to uh, be able to move too. Right. And that's where the, here, I'll give you guys a side by side. Here's the shore. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to a team Friday. Here's the audio, the ATX. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. This is Jeremiah's J man Monero. Welcome to a team Friday. It is a little smoother. Maybe I need to get one of those. I could tell, I could tell that shore is a little bit smoother. A little bit. And I think it's the near feature is better. The near dark feature makes it, gives it that richer tone where the, the, the ATR, and, but guys, we're talking about $150 difference between the two mics yeah. for the money. If you're just getting started, yes, it's, Do it's okay. ATR. It's like 85 bucks. But I'm not just getting started. So maybe it's time to, for a new mic. I don't know. <laughs> I'm kind of... You should have a whole <laughs> studio, Monica, you know, any should, should really say my just studio. an expense account. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Well, <coughs> excuse me. I also have bought things that I didn't use. Um, one of the things, if you're doing it on the road, like if you're going to go out and interview storekeepers or uh, leaders in your community and you're going to go out on the road, I didn't bring it upstairs with me. I do actually have one. There's a Tascam recorder. There's Zoom recorders. And they, they say in your hand, so you can look at look up the Zoom brand and the Tascam brand. And the... Without digging in deep, you're going to want to watch, find some videos on this to learn about it. But there are two portable record recorders. They're so easy. You can take them on the road. The bigger ones, you can put your mics right in them. You can use, you know, the mic cords that go into it, like the, the hefty one. Or you can just use a simpler mic or even use them without a mic. They both have directional mics on them. So if you're on the road, you're going to want to get 
some kind of a different podcast recorder because you won't always have your computer set up. Yeah, that's a good point. I think um, I we have them. I, I put my equipment list in the in the comments as well. One of the ones I have on there, it's, uh, I think it's sure it's a, a Samson. The new wireless ones they have are really nice. They're they're like really they're like a small square where you can yeah. put it on on your lapel or whatever. But I saw yeah. somebody they actually sell like a little microphone stand for it where you take it and put it on the end of it so you could use it like a. Oh yeah. Yeah. Super, super cool. If you're going to be doing that yeah. stuff. out. But people are all the time adapting and changing and adding to their phones. And of course our phones are becoming more powerful. Um, so you can use it. Just make sure whatever form you're going to use, research it. So you can at least get equipment that's useful. And for that, it doesn't mean you have to be perfect. One of Monica's life goals is done is better than perfect. And Amen. we're always learning. So here I've been doing podcasts for a while, but I am thinking, hmm, maybe a mic upgrade. Maybe I don't need that $385 one, but both of y'all love that sure mic. And that would be good for teaching with that far away feature. <clears throat> and that's really good too. Question. So how do I handle my always... guest mic? Cause I, I think that's a great one. If they're not coming into a studio to like record with you in person, which rarely happens these days. Well, and even do, you do... in Nashville, you can record a studio. It costs $200 an hour you know, you can rent a studio. I mean, you could probably find those cheaper outside of Nashville. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Everybody's trying to make it big there. That's why. Although uh, there's lots of them here. So, you know, there's a thing. Um, so how do you handle my, that? Well, what I do for the center for realtor development is I actually send them a mic. I, I know it's not something everybody can do. I never got do. one. I never well, because you already have one. <laughs> I can always use an extra one. What the an extra headset. So um, oh, I send a, a headset. It costs less than thirty dollars. So I don't. Oh, okay. It's not it's a, lo a simple Logitech headset, just so they can have some kind of USB mic that they can plug in. Because I find that the AirPods kind of cut in and out. Their Apple mics. I mean, if it ends up that so I've had. Sometimes people will either buy one themselves or somehow it still doesn't work right. So sometimes we still kind of have to work on it, but I send them um, a decent quality USB microphone for them to use, but not everybody needs one and it's, yeah. you know, far inferior to your equipment. So I wouldn't want to send it to you and insult you, but um, <laughs> that I always ask people, do you have a USB mic? And so many people are doing these kinds of things now. A lot of my guests actually do have a US, a simple USB mic that they got playing with their things. And I do interview people who do some online instructing. So they often do have mics. But if they don't have an, a USB mic, that's that's what I do for that one. And for my husband and I, we actually create that in our home studio and you can see how it looks and sound. It's on YouTube and it's on the podcast app. And we have both of us sit in my studio and we put the two mics into a mixer. So that's how I do it with that. And I actually had one um, when I interviewed Dale Carlton a few years ago. He was actually in town teaching and he came over to the house to go ahead and do the interview with me. But I didn't have the two mic studio at that time. So we literally still sat in different rooms in the house and recorded it still. At that time, I was using Skype and Ecamm and recorded it separately because that was my only mechanism to do okay. it. Okay. Yeah. I, I'm telling you, there's a lot of fly by the seat of your pants with this stuff. You know, don't be afraid. It's got to be perfect. You just need to kind of throw it out there and jump in and get started. All right. Well, thank you, Monica. I appreciate your time. I know you got to get out the door and help another great family in the Franklin area make a move. Right. Yes. Yes. We're doing that. Yep. Many people still moving. So um, thank you so much for having me. And uh, thank you. there again, the handouts are there. And if you need to get in touch with me, I'm easy to find. Just Google me. <laughs> <laughs> Just Google me, baby. All right, guys. Uh, let's give Monica a round of applause here.